Welcome back to Aditel Basics. In this video, we'll go over an example of how a dial pressure gauge might be calibrated from start to finish. If you're new to pressure calibration, we recommend first watching our previous videos that cover the basic concepts, terminology, and equipment of the industry. To begin calibration, we select our dial gauge, also called the Device Under Test, or DUT. It measures up to 300 PSI, with a maximum accuracy of 2% of its full span. In order to do a 4 to 1 calibration, we will need a reference that is at least 4 times more accurate. In this case, that's 0.5% accuracy or better. For this, we'll use an Aditel 681A digital pressure gauge, which easily exceeds this requirement. Finally, we need a way to generate pressure. An Aditel 916A test pump will be used, since it has ports for both gauges built in to easily compare readings between them. To begin, connect both the reference and the DUT to the pump, and vent any pressure built up inside. While the pump is vented, you can zero the reference gauge and record the dial gauge pressure as your first calibration point. Now, choose your set points for comparison. For simplicity's sake, we will do a 5 point round trip calibration with set points at 0, 150, 300, 150, and 0 psi. Your company or governing body should have written standards that determine the amount of set points you will use in your own calibrations. After making note of the zero point on each gauge, operate the pump until the reference gauge reads your second set point, in this case 150 psi. To get an exact reading, you may need to close the isolation valve of the pump and use the fine adjust knob instead of the lever arm. Once you record the readings from both gauges, continue through the set points, going up to 300 psi and then back down to 150 and finally to zero to finish the test. That's it. The data you recorded can now be entered into a calibration software to generate a certificate. The software will calculate the error between the DUT and the reference across the pressure range to determine whether the gauge passed or failed calibration. If the gauge is found within tolerance, no action is needed. If the gauge is out of tolerance, it must be either replaced or adjusted according to the manufacturer's instructions. Now let's look at some other ways this calibration could have been completed. Instead of manually writing the test results down, a smart calibrator could have been used. This could be a reference gauge calibrator such as the Aditel 673, which allows the user to enter the DUT inputs at each set point, or a multifunction calibrator like the Aditel 227 that would record readings from a reference module. Lastly, it could be an automatic calibrator that both includes a reference standard and generates its own pressure, like an Aditel 760 or 761A. Although these options are more expensive than a reference gauge and manual pump, it's important to weigh in the time cost of using manually operated tools versus using an automatic calibrator, especially when calibrating multiple devices. Now that we've gone over a field calibration, let's look at a laboratory calibration. For most devices, calibration labs will use a pressure controller and reference module setup as it allows for multiple DUTs to be connected to a manifold at once. These pressure controllers can often be connected directly to calibration software in order to automatically upload test results and generate calibration certificates. If higher accuracy calibrations are needed, for example to calibrate a reference gauge or module, deadweight testers should be used to ensure a high enough accuracy ratio is met. We hope you enjoyed this series on metrology and pressure calibration basics. If you have any further questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. To learn more about advanced calibration products and techniques, please visit our website at adatel.com.